Hey guys, John Co. Spear Guns going over the Koa Reef Roller. Um, I get a lot of questions on these. I'm going to try to answer everything I can think of. Um, this is a great gun. We put a lot into these. They've been around for about three years now. Um, they've, they've got great reviews. They've, they're very high performance guns. I love these models. Um, roller technology, it's actually been around since the 30s and 40s. Just nobody really made it a user friendly gun. Um, so our reef roller, uh, the way they work is the main, the main purpose of them is the band starts on the bottom. So to maximize the stretch and power out of the band, uh, we're pre-tensioning it. So like your standard band here has all this waste right here, 20, 25% waste. You don't get that with the roller band. It's already sitting right here. The beauty of that is now you have a pre-tensioned band and with the Delrin ball bearing roller, it works like a pulley. So you're lowering the pull needed by about a third and getting all the return out of it. So <clears throat> the, to explain how the roller band is loaded, you see it has two wishbones. The outside wishbone is basically just for uh, your finger to grab because you're grabbing a band that has no waist to it like this one. So you're grabbing this band and that's how you get it started. Pull, start to pull that back. And the shorter wishbone is what gets loaded onto the shark fin. Um, this band is just a regular standard band. We call it a kicker band on a roller. It's really more like an assist band because the roller band is usually so large, it does take a split second to get it moving out of the mechanism. So with the kicker band, that kind of gives it a kickstart and assists it through the power band of the gun and it gives it all the strength that it needs. Um, on the bottom, you'll notice it has two stages. The purpose of these is after the top is loaded, if you want to squeeze more power out of it, we designed this for your thumb to be able to get in here and you can pull it from that stage down to that stage and it gives you exponentially more power, believe it or not, that short amount of seven inches or so. Um, all these guns are built to handle a reel. I designed them that way so they're very easy to put a reel on. Uh, in terms of usage, relining them, the only difference between this and a standard fat bag, mid plus fat bag, whatever gun you're used to, the only difference is the line anchor is on the side. So that just keeps everything out of the way of the rollers and all the moving uh, band when you pull the trigger. So <clears throat> these up here are called carbon fiber lifters. These lifters keep the wishbone off the track. So when you put the shaft in, the shark fin doesn't hit the wishbone. And that would drive you crazy. It also protects that part of the gun. Um, <clears throat> the styles that these come in, I get this question quite a bit. You know, what's the difference between standard, mid plus, and the Euro? Well, here's all three of them. The Euro is rear handle placement, rear trigger placement, and it also utilizes a reverse trigger mech. Now the reverse trigger mech is basically a forward mech engineered backwards to squeeze out an extra inch and a half to two inches of band stretch. Um, so you have your rear, rear handle, rear trigger for the Euro. Standard is, uh, we call standard handle placement, forward handle placement with trigger above the handle as well. The benefit of that is you have easier hip loading ability you have to sacrifice some stock, but it makes it easier hip load by pushing it away from your hip, just like a standard fat back. Uh, the, Euro, oops, the Euro, the benefit is with that rear trigger placement is utilizing all that stock to get the power out of it. So you get more power out of a smaller package. The trade-off is it's a chest loader. So if you're not accustomed to chest loading, it's going to be hard. It takes some time to get used to, but it's worth the benefit if you take the time to learn it. The mid plus is the best of both worlds has the rear trigger placement and forward handle placement. This handle is about an inch and a half in front of the standard, giving you more pivot ability. Now it's not quite a traditional mid handle, which the traditional old mid handles had about 17 inch distance to the remote trigger, which is in here. Ours has about 13 and a half. The reason we did that was when we started doing the traditional mid handle, Everybody that was buying them had a hard time getting used to the trade-off or changing from a standard or a Euro. They wanted the benefits, but it was a very hard trade-off because of all that stock behind your hand. It's a lot different aiming. You're looking down the stock, not like you would with a Euro or a standard where you're aiming through the gun. <clears throat> so 
It's not like a traditional mid-handed. We put the handle in the best place we could find, which was just enough forward to get the benefit, but to still be able to aim through the gun. Um, now, spare on these, spare shafts can be mounted on the standard and the mid-plus, for you guys that like to free shaft. And same with the battle axe free shafting line system, where you go from free shaft to line shaft. That can be put on these two. You can be put on the Euro as well, but most people don't free shaft with the Euros. Um, <clears throat> sizes. Respectively, they come in three sizes. The Euro, 90, 100, 110. These two, 44, 48, 52. That's the same for 90, 100, 110 in the Euro. We just have to call it centimeters in the Euro. So a 90 centimeters, 44, 100 is a 48, and the 110 is a 52. Now, for the standard and mid plus, we also make this uh, little hole monster here, the 34. This is a 34 mid plus smallest gun in the roller that we make. Um, this is a great little hole gun. It's not very heavy. The handle placement's great. You can put it just about anywhere. It's great for really dirty water. I mean, it, it does cost more than like a standard 42 or a shorty, but it has almost no recoil. And that is one of the biggest benefits with these roller guns is because the band is moving two directions at the same time as it contracts, it cancels the recoil out. So if it cancels the recoil out, it barely kicks when you pull the trigger, so you can get all that power and almost no recoil. And I get the question all the time, how much power? About 15, 20% more than the same gun in that size of a, like a 52 standard fat pack compared to a 52 standard roller. So, and that's all band dependent. So I tell everybody when you get these, we have to band them up the middle. If it's too easy to load that roller, Shorten the band by a two inch increment at a time until you get it to where it's nice and snug and it's a little bit of a challenge for that last inch. If it's too easy, that's the return you're going to get, but we have to make them up the middle. We can only, we can only make them shorter, we can't make them longer. So, <clears throat> if you uh, have any other questions about these rollers, just shoot me an email, johnjohn at coastbeerguns.com. Thanks.